Russia-Ukraine war live, Belarusian Prime Minister confirms weapons supply to Russia, the Russian war has now stepped into day 91 with a worrying death toll in Ukraine. Moscow claimed that the special operation was begun to stop genocide in East Ukraine. The EC president has accused Russia of weaponizing food supplies as Moscow refused to step back from the Black Sea ports. Meanwhile, pro-Russian authorities in Kherson requested a military base in the area. Belarusian Prime Minister confirms supplying weapons to Russia. The Belarusian Prime Minister has confirmed that his country is supplying weapons to the Russian Federation. Prime Minister Roman Golovchenko also claimed that both countries have set up joint programs to work amid Western sanctions that have made sales of weapons more difficult. According to reports, Belarus has been conducting military drills along its border with Ukraine since the beginning of May. Notably, Belarus has been Russia's closest ally since the latter launched a full-fledged war on Ukraine on February 24. Ukrainian president says Russia must pull back to pre-war positions. Ukraine President Volodymyr Zelensky, on May 25, said that Russia must pull back to pre-war positions to ensure peace talks between the two nations. Expressing his willingness for negotiations, Zelensky said. They should demonstrate at least something like steps withdrawing their troops and equipment to the position before the 24th of February. That would be a correct step, first step in negotiations, he said as per AP. Meanwhile, the ongoing conflict continues to damage the global economies and has triggered a global food. 238 children killed, over 400 injured by Russia. Ukraine. The Ukrainian Prosecutor General's office has said that 238 children have been killed since the Russian military offensive started in U. The Prosecutor General's office in the statement said that more than 433 children have been injured in Ukraine since the Russian aggression commenced on February 24. Ukraine to receive 20 M113 armored personnel carriers from Lithuania. Lithuania's Defense Ministry announced on May 25 that it will transfer 20 M113 armored personnel carriers to Ukraine in order to fight against Russian aggression. Along with 20 armored personnel carriers, Lithuania has also decided to provide military trucks and mining vehicles to Ukraine. Ukraine shares footage of cruise missile attacks by Russian troops. Ukraine's foreign ministry on May 5 shared footage of Russian cruise missiles striking Zaporizhia. According to the ministry, Four missiles were launched at 7.43 a.m. IST, today. Russia lays down conditions for allowing humanitarian food corridors in Russian Deputy Foreign Minister Andrei Rudenko said on May 25 that Russia is willing to provide humanitarian food corridors for ships carrying food to leave Ukraine in exchange for the lifting of some sanctions. The minister also said that Moscow will explore the prospect of a prisoner exchange with Ukraine once the prisoners who surrendered have been convicted. Costa Rica condemns Russia's invasion of Ukraine discusses bilateral trade with Kyiv. Ukraine's Minister of Foreign Affairs Dmitry Koleba, on May 25, thanked Costa Rica for condemning Russia for its invasion of Ukraine. He revealed that in his meeting with the country's foreign and trade minister, he discussed ways to intensify political dialogue and deepen bilateral trade. UK government issues permission for sale of Chelsea FC at $5 billion. The UK government on Wednesday gave a nod to the sale of Chelsea Football Club at a whopping $5 billion. The proceeds from the sale will be used for humanitarian supplies to Ukraine, a British government spokesperson said, adding that the sale deal will in no way benefit the original owner Russian oligarch Roman Abramov. Given the sanctions, we placed on those linked to Putin and the bloody invasion of Ukraine, the long-term future of the club can only be secured under a new owner. British Secretary of State for Culture, Media, and Sports, Nadine Dorries said in a tweet. Kromatrosk mayor urges citizens to stay away after Russian forces intensify air raids. The mayor of the eastern Ukrainian city of Kramatorsk Oleksandra Honkarenko, on Wednesday, requested the residents of the city to stay away after Russia intensified air strikes. An anxious night in Kromatorsk. He wrote on Facebook, 
adding that the invaders launched attacks on the private as well as the public sector. Zelensky questions unity of Western nations over Ukraine crisis. Ukraine President Volodymyr Zelensky on Wednesday stated that the Western nations lack unity over the war in Ukraine. During his second address at the World Economic Forum, WEF, the embattled president questioned, We're on the European continent and we need the support of the United Europe. Is there this unity regarding the accession of Finland and Sweden to NATO? No, no. So, is there a strong joint West? No. Russian Major General Konomop Batashev killed, Ukraine military claims as war enters day 91. As the brutal war between Russia and Ukraine enters its 91st day with Russian forces continuously attacking Ukrainian cities and the ex-Soviet war hit country showing tough resilience against the Russian attackers. Ukraine's Defense Department has claimed that they have killed one of the high-ranking Russian of Major General Konomat Batashev was killed after Ukrainian forces shot down the plane he was piloting, according to BBC Russia. The information about the death of the 63-year-old Russian Major General was confirmed by three former subordinates of Batashev, who were in touch with him until the plane crashed on Sunday. The Ukrainian armed forces announced that a Russian Su-25 attack aircraft was shot down in the sky over the Luhansk region. Notably, Batashev was one of the highest-ranking Russians who had been killed by Ukrainian forces. And with this development, Russia has so far lost as many as 31 military pilots, and at least nine retired Russian soldiers have been killed in Ukraine. Canada will deliver 20,000 NATO standard artillery rounds of ammunition to war-ravaged Ukraine. In a bid to assist Ukraine in fighting the Russian invasion, Canadian National Defense Minister, Anina Anand announced that the country will provide more than 20,000 artillery rounds of 155mm NATO, North Atlantic Treaty Organization standard ammunition along with fuses and char According to a press release from the Government of Canada, the ammunition will be launched from weapons, including M777 howitzers that Canada and its allies delivered to Ukrainian military forces and for which, members of the Canadian Armed Forces provided training to their Ukrainian counterparts. Russia aims to ruin everything in Donbass, says Zelensky reiterates plea for military aid amidst the raging war in Eastern Europe, embattled Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky, in a video address on Tuesday, asserted that the Russian army were targeting Ukrainian cities of strategic significance with an aim to dis- He stated that the situation in Donbass remains extremely difficult and Russian forces were utilizing all their strength to attack. Zelensky, in his address, yet again reiterated his call on the international community to provide heavy weapons like MLRS, tanks, anti-ship and other military equipment to mitigate severe crises and ensure stability in the world. But the situation in Donbass is extremely difficult. In fact, all the strength the Russian army still has was thrown there to attack Lyman, Popozna, Severodonetsk, Slovyansk. The occupiers want to destroy everything there, Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky said in his video address. Nike refuses to renew its franchise agreement in Russia mid-war. Nike has decided not to resume its franchise with Inventive Retail Group in Russia. Vedomosti the retailer runs 27 Nike brand outlets in Russia. Notably, Nike had suspended all operations in Russia in early March. On the other hand, clothing brand Mark and Spencer's has also announced its decision to leave the Russian market. Ukraine is using French-made long-range cannons to deter Russian aggression, Paris. French government officials reported that Ukraine forces are using long-range Caesar cannons delivered by France. This came hours before Ukraine Infrastructure Minister Volodymyr Omelian on Wednesday shared images of defenders training with the long-range weapons. Zelensky reiterates his stance on engaging in peace talks only with Putin. Speaking at the World Economic Forum, WEF, on Wednesday, 
Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky told that he is only willing to engage in peace talks with his Russian counterpart Vladimir Putin and not other. Meanwhile, Russia has maintained that any peace deal with Kyiv will include recognition of the independence of the Donetsk and Luhansk region. A close ally of Putin, Dmitry Medvedev, former Russian president, also suggested that demands to pull out Russian troops from Crimea will be treated as a threat. EU freezes assets worth 10 billion euros belonging to Russian oligarchs. In addition to existing sanctions, the European Union, EU, on Wednesday seized assets worth 10 billion euros belonging to Russian oligarch. 80 schools in occupied Donetsk region have been switched to Russian syllabus, report. At least 80 schools in the occupied region of Donetsk have been shifted to the Russian curriculum and Russian language instructions. Russian forces launched four missile strikes on Zaporizhia, one killed. Ukraine armed forces informed that Russian troops renewed shelling in Zaporizhia on Tuesday. At least one person was killed and several injured after Russia launched four missile attacks, eyewitnesses told Kyiv Independent. Relatives of Ukraine armed forces receiving suspicious phone calls. Kyiv. General Staff of Armed Forces of Ukraine in its latest briefing has issued a warning against forged phone calls. Relatives of Ukraine Armed Forces are receiving suspicious phone calls and messages, the update said. The Ukraine Defense Ministry claimed that such phone calls are being made to Ukrainian servicemen who have been captured or reported missing. UK Mod echoes global concern over food insecurity as Russia continues to block Black Sea ports. UK Mod on Wednesday stated that the continued blockade of Black Sea ports by Russia has led to a considerable surge in the price of staple food grains. There has been no significant shipping activity in or out of Odessa since the start of the war, the ministry said in its latest intelligence report. Russia to pose threat to Europe even after reaching ceasefire with Kyiv, warns Polish FM. Russia would continue to threaten the peace in Europe even after a ceasefire agreement is reached over the conflict in Ukraine said Polish Foreign Minister Zbigniew Rao on Tuesday. During a press conference alongside his German counterpart Annalena Baerbock, Rao said that it would be daydreaming to think that Russia would change immediately after the ceasefire is pledged in the Moscow Key. The Polish Foreign Minister even expressed fears of his country facing a Russian invasion. Rao said, that Russia changes immediately after a ceasefire has been agreed is daydreaming. It would remain a danger for peace in Europe. Not only did he fear the Russian invasion into Poland, but also the danger of an armed invasion of the countries in the NATO eastern flank. According to Rao, both Poland and Germany must strive for Russia to suffer a strategic defeat and its occupation forces to leave Ukraine within the borders recognized by international law. Zelensky asserts Ukraine ready for a prisoner exchange with Russia as war enters day 91. On the 91st day of the ravaging war in Eastern Europe, embattled Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky asserted that Kyiv is ready for a prisoner exchange with Russia even tomorrow and urged his allies to keep mounting pressure on Krim. Through a video conference, Zelensky said to a Davos audience on May 23, Monday, they must, referring to his allies, keep the political pressure on any way they can, through powerful business connections, through the closure of businesses, oil embargo, and through threats, real threats of sanctions, thwarting business, we can actively intensify the exchange of our people for Russian servicemen. The Ukrainian leader further claimed that presently, the exchange of prisoners is a humanitarian issue and a very political choice that relies on the support of many governments. He also underscored the fact that it is very essential that the entire world does not beg or make concessions to Russia, regardless of the circumstances. Zelensky, in his address, further added, we do not need the Russian servicemen, we only need ours. We are ready for an exchange even tomorrow. He went on to say that Ukrainians had filled tens of thousands of black body bags with Russian servicemen remains who were left behind.